On April 11, 1970, NASA's third manned mission to the moon, Apollo 13, lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center. Aboard were Commander James A. Lovell, Command Module Pilot John L. Swigger, and Lunar Module Pilot Fred W. Hayes. The mission's goal was to land in the Framauro Highlands to further explore the lunar surface. The Apollo spacecraft was made up of two main parts, the Command Service Module, CSM, named Odyssey, which housed the crew and the spacecraft's operations systems, and the Lunar Module, LM, named Aquarius, designed for the lunar landing. Providing power, electricity, and life support to the CSM were two oxygen tanks, among other critical systems. Little did anyone know that within one of these tanks was a manufacturing defect that would soon lead to one of the most frightening space emergencies in history. Built into the service module of the spacecraft, these tanks were intended to keep the astronauts alive with essential life support and propulsion throughout their mission. The mission went smoothly until the evening of April 13th. At a distance of over 200,000 miles from Earth, the crew carried out a routine procedure to stir the oxygen tanks. The stirring was to prevent the oxygen layers from settling. At 55 hours, 55 minutes, and 4 seconds into the flight, Swigert turned the switch to stir the tanks. A moment later, a low-frequency thump sounded through the spacecraft, followed by changing electrical readings and warning lights. The explosion had happened in oxygen tank number two, but the cause was not immediately clear to the astronauts or ground control. This serious failure was later found to be caused by damaged Teflon insulation on the wires inside the tank. The resulting short circuit had caused an explosion, releasing oxygen and damaging the service module. This had a domino effect, greatly damaging the spacecraft's power, movement, and life support systems. The explosion shook the spacecraft violently, throwing debris into space and putting the astronauts in a dangerous situation, depending on their quick thinking and a quickly shrinking supply of resources. As Odyssey teetered on the edge of disaster, Lovell calmly reported to Mission Control, Houston, we've had a problem. The phrase would later become legendary, though often misquoted. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Gene Kranz, the flight director, with a team of NASA engineers, faced the huge challenge of saving the crew. With the service module damaged, the crew's only hope was to use the lunar module as a lifeboat. However, Aquarius was only designed to keep two men alive for a 45-hour moon landing mission, not for keeping three astronauts alive over 90 hours. The lunar module's resources, including water, battery power, and carbon dioxide cleaning capability, were now critical for survival. Plans for water rationing, power saving, and creative carbon dioxide removal had to be quickly created and perfectly carried out. The atmosphere was tense as the world watched, prayed, and hoped for the safe return of the Apollo 13 crew. Every decision from this point on was to walk the fine line between uncertain survival and certain doom. With the lunar landing now cancelled, survival depended on retrofitting Aquarius. A major issue was the carbon dioxide buildup. The LM scrubbers were not compatible with those of the Odysseys. An urgent and inventive solution was required, making an adapter using only the materials available on board. Engineers on the ground wrote instructions, which the astronauts then followed, to create what became known as the mailbox, a makeshift duct system to channel CO2 through the fitting lithium hydroxide canisters. 
This device was held together with nothing more than the astronauts' cleverness and materials like duct tape, plastic bags, and flight manual covers. Meanwhile, power-saving measures were carefully planned. The lunar module's normal power usage of about 60 amps was reduced to a bare minimum 12 to 15 amps. Precious battery life was saved for re-entry operations, essential for the last part of the journey home. The cold began to seep in as heating was turned to a minimum, and the crew endured temperatures near freezing, handling water condensation that caused concerns for the instruments. The very nature of human ingenuity was being tested in the vacuum of space. After the explosion, a direct return to Earth was impossible. The new plan required a swing around the moon to gain a free return path, helped by lunar gravity. It was a delicate maneuver. Too close, and they would crash onto the lunar surface. Too far, and they would miss Earth, forever lost to the dark emptiness. The lunar flyby, a stark reminder of the mission they could no longer complete, gave the astronauts a brief look at the moon's desolate beauty. As they rounded the moon, Lovell and his crew used Aquarius' descent propulsion system for a crucial burn. Lasting 4 minutes and 23 seconds, this path adjustment burn was done blindly, with no onboard computer help due to the critical power saving mode. The following days involved carefully measured course changes and a combination of manual readings put together by ground control teams and the astronauts' now thorough knowledge of their spacecraft. This journey home was steered using celestial sightings, including the sun, earth, and stars for alignment. Each carefully planned maneuver pushed them closer to the planet they so desperately needed to reach. Re-entry into Earth's atmosphere presented the final daunting challenge. To detach Aquarius, the module that had sustained them against the odds would now have to be let go, leaving the command module as their only vessel for survival. The battered Odyssey, with a weakened heat shield, was ready to endure temperatures of over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. If the heat shield had been damaged from the explosion, or if their angle of re-entry was not exact, the astronauts would either be burned up or ricochet off the atmosphere into the void. As they dove into the Earth's atmosphere, communication was lost, as is typical during re-entry. However, the blackout lasted a terrifying 1 minute and 28 seconds longer than expected, leading to a nerve-wracking wait for contact. When Mission Control finally heard Lovell's voice cutting through the static, it brought about a wave of global relief. On April 17, 1970, the capsule landed safely in the Pacific Ocean, where the crew was picked up by the USS Iwo Jima. The safe return of Apollo 13 stands as a testament to the limitless human spirit, the potential for creativity under pressure, and the steadfast resolve to turn potential tragedy into a story of survival.